Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And motion blowers! So, here's some interesting news. Some of you may have known that what I said on my last video is that my buddy Andy from Jericho had appendicitis. So you ready for this? He actually slept and it burst while he was sleeping, which caused a lot of infection. So he had complications to the appendectomy. So he was home for about a week. Everything seemed to be okay. Until recently, apparently he had scarring from the laparoscopic surgery and the scarring caused his small intestines to twist and he has a full blockage in his uh, small intestines. So he was in such deep pain and his family is away. And so I went over there to take him to the hospital, to the emergency room, where I just dropped him off. Apparently he has to have another surgery to get rid of that blockage of his bowel. I always said, stay out of the hospital because nothing good comes from the hospital. If you go into the hospital for something, you're gonna come out with something else. Anyway, since I was near my mom's house, I decided to come to my mom's house. And today I'm gonna be loading up something interesting. Some of you may know that I actually have an entire setup here at my mom's house. I got a full size dual stage snowblower. You guys remember this, I've used it over the years when we've had significant snow. And of course my mom's in her uh, early 80s, so she's not gonna be able to do anything. She lives by herself. So I come and whenever there's a big snow, I use this baby to uh, clear her driveway and her walkway. Because in New York City, which is where she lives in Queens, they have sidewalks and you have to clear the sidewalk when there's snow. Otherwise, they'll find you, they'll give you a ticket. And she's gotten tickets before and I'd have to write, she's an 83 year old lady living by herself. You gotta give me some time to have somebody come or me come and shovel the snow. Why do you gotta give her a ticket like right away? Like the second the snow stops to give her a ticket. You know, it's just not cool. Anyway, people have a heart here. They always dismiss it, but still it's a pain in the balls. So anyway, um, while I have a lot of dual stage snowblowers at home, I list them, nobody's interested. However, this is a track drive, a little bit more unique than your run of the mill two wheel dual stage snowblower, right? So I took pictures of this last time I was here mowing the lawn and I posted it. And I've actually got quite a lot of offers for this. I listed it for very cheap, 275. I know to you guys right now, it may seem like a lot of money, but honestly, these babies were going for 500 bucks like five years ago, easily. Uh, and this is in great shape. As I recall, you just gotta put gas in it, fires right up. Uh, of course, these things are so heavy and also it doesn't move. The tracks don't move just by freewheeling, right? I mean, some do, but this one doesn't. So the only way to get this into my truck is to drive it up ramps. So therefore I went to the gas station, got some gas. I'm gonna put some gas in here, check the oil. Hopefully it fires up and I'm gonna load up this thing into Sketchy with ramps. Oh, but Henry, what are you gonna do if it snows again? Your mom's not gonna have a snowblower. Well, I thought of that. First of all, even on Long Island, we haven't had any significant snow for quite a while. Uh, in New York City, they even get way less snow than we do in Long Island. So, you guys remember my lively, single-stage, electric, battery-powered snowblower. This thing's kind of a beast for a little thing like this. As long as it's powdery snow, you'll clear anything with this thing. And even with slush, it takes a little longer, but you'll eventually clear it, you know what I mean? So this is more than enough for my mom's house here in Queens. So we'll leave this here, and if it snows, we'll use this. In the meantime, hopefully I'll get like two, 275 for that snowblower if we sell it. If not, it's just sitting here for years anyway. Might as well just take it back to my place and hopefully sell it eventually. All right, I've got the ramps all set up. That's about the width of it. Like I said, this thing does not move at all unless it moves on its own with the motor running. So let's get the motor running. Put some gas in it and see if it fires up.
bone dry. Nothing in there. This also does have electric start as well. And I have not used this in ages. And it does not have a fuel shutoff. I hope the carburetor is good. And I don't even remember when the last time I checked the oil. Son of a gun. Well, it's not full, but it's past the ad line. It's not true fuel, it's regular gas. I just used a container. See, I knew you guys were saying, don't put two-stroke oil in there. You can't put two-stroke in a four-stroke. FYI, this is a 5.5 horsepower Tecumseh horizontal with electric start. Electric start is the 110 AC kind, not 12 volt. You plug your extension cord in here. So it should be trickle, trickle, trickle. Gas should be going into the carby. They say carby in England. The carby. All right, what do you guys think? You guys think it'll start? It's on choke, full throttle, and usually one pull. Let's see. is so reliable so reliable okay I'm driving home and I'm almost home you guys know the street that's where I ride my tractors around look what I see oh it's electric should I just take it and see it's my neighbors what would I do with this? It does come with a bagger though. Hmm. I have a feeling that the bagger might be useful. And it's got a mulch plug too, and a side deflector. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I take it? What would I do with it? Nah, I'm not gonna take it. I'm just gonna take the bagger. Should I take it? Hmm. 
am I going to do with it? Nah, I'm not going to take it. All right. So it's the next day. I decided to keep the mo uh, the snowblower in the truck so I didn't have to load it back up again. So I gave the guy the address. He had left me his phone number. And then he says, I'll be there at 2 at the church. So 2 goes by. Then 2.30. Then 3. Then 3.30 goes by. No word from him at all. So I'm like, what is going on? Another dud, right? Anyway, he finally texts me again on Facebook and says, I went there and went back and you didn't show up. And I said, I told you to text me when you're five minutes away so I can meet you at the church. He's like, I don't have Facebook on my phone. It's on my computer. That's why I gave you my phone number. And I said, who doesn't have Facebook on their phone? What do you have a flip phone and you use Facebook on your desktop at home? I mean, that's not exactly his fault because there are old school people who don't have smartphones. I see old guys with flip phones all the time that don't have smartphones. So just a miscommunication. He's obviously pissed because he drove an hour here, sat in the parking lot for a half hour, went back home. Would have been just as, if he had a smartphone, he could have just downloaded Facebook and found me and texted me and said, I'm here. Anyway, that's the, dis that's the discord between older generation and the new generation. If you don't adapt to technology, these things happen. It's not really his fault, and it's definitely not my fault. How am I supposed to know he's an old timer that doesn't have a smartphone with Facebook on it? You automatically assume that when you get a text message from somebody on Facebook Marketplace, that he's texting me on his phone, not a desktop. So uh, it's created a lot of interest actually. So I'll just keep it in the uh, truck until somebody wants to see it. That way I don't have to unload it and load it again. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is rain. I don't think we have rain for the next three days, so it should be okay. I'll keep you updated. Let's see if we sell this. Oh, hey guys. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna be selling this in the near future. So I'm gonna have to get it down. The reason why is because some nut wants to buy my found off the street the other day. Uh, I just listed it as is because trying to repair this and make it brand new is going to take a lot of money and a lot of work, which it's not worth. So transmission's busted, so it's just used as a push mower. Somebody from Queens is coming to pick it up for a hundred bucks. So I gotta go meet him at the church. Gotta get that snow blower down. Looks like it's gonna have an issue right around here. We'll work it out. This thing always fires up for a pull. Always.
love it. As you know, it's been about a year since I bought my tonneau cover for Sketchy. I only paid $125, so I knew that it probably wasn't the best quality. There's a thing that really annoys me every time it rains. It's mostly dried up now, but we had a lot of rain. This was like an entire swimming pool, and I always wanted to know why. It just droops down and creates more of a ditch. Every time it rains, I have a pool and I have to spend time to get the water out with a leaf blower or just go fast and it'll all come out. I'm gonna to try to fix that right now. So if you look inside, there are three horizontal bars that hold the tonneau cover up and it droops right there as you can see. So when I fold it up, this first bar here looks like it's kind of bent. Probably bent due to the weight. The second bar is also bent. And the third bar is also bent, but it's bent the right direction. It's bowed this way so that it pushes the water off. So I'm thinking I'm going to reverse this one and make it upside down so that it's not bowed downward, but rather upward. And I could do that simply by loosening this and spinning it. There, I actually reversed all three. So now they're bowed upward. So it's supposed to push the water out. However, this first section here still has a ditch. That's from the weight of the water and snow stretching the material to make a drip, a ditch pool. So I don't think this could be helped. But I'm surprised that it has held up. There are no rips or tears. It'll be fine for now. See how it holds up the next rainstorm. On to the next thing. Jeez, that can't be good. It's like so reliable. I've had it like 20 years. Maybe I won't sell it. No, of course I'm going to sell it. Like too many snow blowers as it is. Let's see if we can sell this today. I definitely don't have any room in my sheds for this. Guess I just have to leave it in the garage.
So as you guys saw from time lapse, that's the guy right there. Uh, nice guy, but little strange. So, you know, that's why you meet people at churches and public lots, because you don't want nuts to know where you live. And you're gonna find a nut eventually. Anyway, this one, <laughs> this nut bought it, 100 bucks. Good score since I just picked it off the street the other day. Yes, I did do some troubleshooting with it, which took some time, but I wanted to see if I can get the tra transmission working, but we ascertained that the gears were bad. Not 100% proof, but pretty sure. So uh, to get rid of it in a few days for 100 bucks is fantastic. Like I said, guys, you're picking it up off the street, you're getting it running, it's finding 100 bucks on the street. Uh, in this case, it ran, period. I could have just picked it up and listed it right away without troubleshooting, but I wanted to try to get some more money out of it. If the transmission work would have been better. Anyway, good score, 100 bucks. Didn't sell the snowblower yet. Stay tuned for that. But we did get a Honda lawnmower that we found off the street sold, and uh, it's always good when you do that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed my recent vlogs. Uh, just basically what I do on a daily basis, sometimes encompassing a couple of days. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Keep the hustle going. Like, subscribe, share. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. This guy screwed this up. I'm see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.